So on this morning, I wanna don't want to belabor too long, but I want to talk about the want to want to talk about it and teach um, as a continuation. I'll call it from from last Sunday. Last Sunday we we uh, we talked and and we, we talked from a, a title. Uh, you can't tell me how to feel. And in that lesson, we were focusing our attention on uh, the need biblically, and we know spiritually uh, that we have a requirement as believers, and, and the Bible tells us this, that we must get control of our emotions, and we can't use uh, our emotions uh, as a crutch or a means to allow us <laughs> to act in a way that is ungodly and not righteous. And, and so on this uh, morning, I want to continue along those lines. There is a there's a movie uh, that maybe this younger generation is not as familiar with, but I would say uh, those of us who are a little older uh, have heard of the movie Cool Hand Luke. Uh, and maybe you've heard the term, maybe not seen the movie, but in, in the movie Cool Hand Luke, uh, Paul Newman playing the character Luke uh, has been incarcerated uh, in Florida, he is on the chain gang, and he is he is a he's taken issue with the whole uh, prison concept and the the way the prison is governed, and especially he takes issue with the warden of the prison, um, who he refers to as captain. And, and one of the more popular or famous lines from this movie. Uh, is Luke, or Paul Newman, is quoted as as he's standing before Captain. And he says, uh, Captain, uh, I wish you would stop being so good to me. And he is being sarcastic. And the captain, or the, the warden who's in charge, uh, he immediately with some disdain says, don't ever talk to me that way ever. And he proceeds to hit Paul Newman and he knocks him down in an aggressive manner. And as he's standing there looking down over Luke, he says, what we have here is a failure to communicate. Some men you cannot reach. So you get what we had last week, which is the way he wants it. Well, he gets it. And then he says, I don't like it any more than you mean. And so one of the more popular lines in, in, in culture that one of the takeaways from that movie is the, is the line or the term, what we have here is a failure to communicate. And what Captain is alluding to in that movie is the fact that they have tried in multiple ways to show Luke how the prison system works and how it is going to work. And in every turn, he is he is buffeted in, in every way. And so he eventually, in this scene, says, what we have here is a failure to communicate. I cannot get through to you. And so as a result, the only way that I feel like I can get through to you is through violence. And since that's the way you want it, that's the way you got it. And he ends by saying, hey, I don't like this any more than you men do. I don't wanna, I don't want to have to uh, inflict violence on you in order to get you to follow the rules. And so um, the, 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 we'll come from the title on this morning, what we have here is a failure to communicate. And a little different than the line in the movie or, or the, the circumstance of that movie is, I'm not saying in any way or condone in any way violence, but what I am saying and what I, I think will become very apparent to you is that something that we have to do as believers and we have a responsibility to do as believers. And I believe in, I believe even more so for our own uh, survivability 
uh, and long term and making sure we live out a, a long and, and, and prosperous life, an effective life, is we have to get some control over how we communicate as Christians. And when I talk about communicating, I'm Amen. speaking in terms of how we communicate with one another as believer to believer. But I think even more importantly, we have to be mindful as Christians how we communicate our message to a non-believing world. And I think the way Christians communicate, how they, and as we talked last week, as we carry ourselves, our demeanor, the uh, way in which we carry ourselves and act has to be different than the world. And one of those things that's vitally important is how we communicate um, this word of God and how we communicate ourselves to people. And it's vitally important. And the Bible tells us that communication is vitally important. And, and those who have uh, spent any time in Bible study uh, with me have on various occasions uh, heard me talk about how serious I think um, communication is when, we're st when we start talking about male-to-male -male communication. Um, and if we don't get some control over it, and we don't get some understanding of it, I do believe more and more uh, because of the world and the way people are influenced um, but in this world, it could be a life or death situation as a result of your ability to communicate and communicate a message and get in and out of conversations and communications with your life. And so with that, I want to uh, I want to start, I want to go, go to the scripture. Uh, we oftentimes get into a, a battle or debate about when we talk about the church. And, and I think uh, some people say, was well, the church a building or is it people? And I think it's very, very aware, very clear in the, in the New Testament, especially when Jesus is speaking and he's talking about the church. Uh, Sometimes, but it's very rare, would he ever talk about the church in a in a global uh, kind of setting? But he really is referring to that church as the people, uh, or in like minded people, group of believers, not necessarily a physical location or a building. So when he comes back and he says he's going to come back looking for a church without spot or wrinkle, he is not talking about First Missionary Baptist Church or First Antioch. He's not going to come to that church, that building. That's what, what he's speaking of. But what he's saying is he's going to come back to the church. The, the church are the people, the like-minded believers in him. And that's who he's going to look for is who has a relationship, who has a place with him without spot or wrinkle as a person. And, and so when you, when you understand that and you understand what that means, then when you start talking about communication, you understand that when the Bible is speaking about how we communicate, he is talking about amongst the people. And so he is, he's talking about as a, as a collective uh, body of believers, we have to be mindful of how we as a church, as a group of people, as a body of believers are communicating amongst each other and amongst the world. Uh, so Proverbs chapter chapter 18, and I want to just set uh, uh, some boundary or some tone to what does the Bible say about communication? What, 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 what does it say? What scripture, what does scripture say about, say about it, how important it is? So we'll start in the book of Proverbs. Uh, and we're going to set the tone, and then we're going to go back to the beginning, and then we're going to work our way uh, through some scriptures here to, to, to make sure we're clear on the importance of communication, how we must do it, and not do it. Um, so Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 says this. It says this, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now, once again, where it says death and life, so good, evil, longevity, brevity, 
is in these these things that we reside in in our mouths that they're in the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof and understand that it says hey well if you love your tongue what you speak understand that you're going to enjoy whatever you put out of it and so if you love it and you love and appreciate it um and you are spreading and, and speaking life or speaking love then you will enjoy the fruit of those spirits however in the same token if you are speaking death and spewing hatred and 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 and, and defiling people and yourself understand you will enjoy the fruit thereof also go to matthew um chapter 12 verse 36 and in matthew chapter 12 verse 36 we find ourselves here i believe we're going to find jesus speaking and in matthew 12 26 it says this jesus says and if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then the kingdom stand? So understand he is talking here. Uh, he is talking here about uh, the ability to cast out or the ability here when he says, and if Satan cast out Satan. So if evil cast out evil, he is divided against himself. Well, we know in another scripture in the Bible, it tells us that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And so understand that evil can't cast out evil. So he says here that if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then the kingdom stand? And understand he's asking the question, much as he is asking the question i believe of us today is if we are going to be evil and if we are going to speak evil how can we cast out evil it doesn't work it doesn't fit it doesn't make sense now man I man i want to um i want to go to I'm going to go to James, which is a very familiar scripture, but I do want to, I do want to check, uh, I want to swing by something really quickly here. Um, go to James chapter three, verse five through eight. James three, verses five through eight. And it says this in James chapter three, verse five through eight. It says, even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defiled the whole body and set it on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire of hell for every kind of beast and of bird and of serpent and of things of the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind but the tongue can no man tame it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Come on now, Dave. Come on now. Speak the word. And so we find here in the book of James uh -huh. that one of the things it's warning us about is our tongue. Now, I want to be very clear. I'm not talking just about our mouth. 
So I think it's important we talk about communication because we live in a, a world now that is uh, highly non nonverbal, but we communicate with emojis and words and pictures and memes, and we have very creative ways of communicating without opening our mouth. However, if you if you think about the concept of talking or when it's speaking of talking here, it's really talking about communicating. How we communicate and the tongue is one of those things. Um, but we are becoming a, 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 a community or, or a world where people sit behind keyboards and type words. They don't have to go on record opening their mouth. But the intent and the content is the same because the effect can be, uh, be just as powerful. And so one of the things that's being talked about here in the book of James is the power of this tongue and how it can destroy things. And it destroys things quickly. And it also, what I think is a very important in verse six, it says, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body. So that scripture to me says, no matter what kind of life you live, no, ma no matter what kind of show we put on social media, no matter what kind of things we do outside of our home, fundamentally, what destroys the whole body and can do it the fastest is how we communicate. How we talk to people, how we communicate with people. And it says, the word says here, it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. So understand that it is saying this the way we communicate with people, the way we talk to people, it says it sets everything in motion. And so much so that it sets it in motion. Yes. But it's the course of nature. And so understand, if you say, what's the course of nature? The course of our nature is fleshly. Fleshly. And the course of our nature is fleshly and also very evil. Mm, my man. And so it is set on fire of hell. Wow. So it's saying the way we communicate, either mm -hmm. amongst each other in the body mm -hmm. or with those who are outside of the body, we I'm have not. to be very careful that we don't speak and open death and damnation on ourselves or those who we are communicating with. Because fundamentally, we come from a place of flesh or going back to last week, we come from a place of emotion. We don't come from a place of spirit. And so as a result, oftentimes when we're communicating and when we're talking to others and we're communicating with others, oftentimes it's not from a good and uh, grounded, spiritually grounded place. It's very selfish. It's very fleshly. It's very pride. And as a result, that is from hell. And so the, 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 the scripture ends here in verse eight, he says, but the tongue no man can tame. Now the key was it says no man can tame. So understand that we can go around reading all of the self-help books and all the stuff we want to do, but it says no man can tame this tongue. So that alludes to me that it is saying if no man can tame it, and it says it's full, it's unruly, it's evil, and it's full of deadly poison, 
It says no man can tame it, which is why it's very important, vitally important. Come on now. That God and the Holy Spirit gets control yes. of our mouth. Or more importantly, gets control of how we communicate. Preach, mm. Pete, preach. And so in Genesis, if we go back to Adam, and if you go back to Adam and his first communication, so the original man, the first man, his first communication happens in verse 20. Uh, chapter 1, verse 20, Adam speaks for the first time. And it says, and God said, uh, and this is, of course, um, he, he's just, we're just going through the, uh, the, the process here. Um, and, it, and, and we understand, I should say this, we, we understand that uh, when Adam finally gets, gets into speaking, um, he says a couple things. But it's a, interesting how Adam speaks pre-fall and he speaks post-fall. So when Adam truly is operating in the spirit, he speaks one way. And, but then when he gets out of that, he speaks yet a very uh, different way. And it's, 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 it's vitally important um, that we, we pay attention to it. So in, in, uh, in Genesis, I'm sorry, I said chapter one. In Genesis chapter two, we get the first time Adam gets to speak, and it says this, Genesis chapter 2, verse 20, it says, and Adam gave names to all the cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field, but for Adam there was not found a help meet for him. So understand, Adam is speaking, he's speaking there, then in verse 23 through 25, he gets to speak again. And it says in verse 23, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And it closes by saying, and this is not Adam speaking, of course, but it closes by making a point. And they were both naked. Uh, they were both naked, man and wife, and not ashamed. So when Adam speaks in verse 20, when he speaks in verse 23 and 24, he is speaking from a place of authority. He's speaking from a place of obedience. He's speaking from a place of naming power. He's speaking from a place of, place of making and setting rules in place for how things are going to operate. Now, the next time Adam speaks is after the fall of man. And he speaks the first time in uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 10, he says this, and he said, I heard, the, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. Then he speaks again in verse 12. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest me to be, to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Adam is no longer, no longer speaking from a place of obedience, a place of authority, a place of naming power, a place of making and setting rules. He is now speaking in verse 10 from a place of fear and anxiety because he speaks to God and he says, and he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid. He is speaking from a place of fear. And then he says, because I was naked. Now, when it ended verse two, it made a point to say that they were naked and not ashamed. Now, Adam is saying, God, I know better than you. I mm. am naked and ashamed. And so he says, as a result, I hid myself. 
Then he speaks again, and now he's speaking from a place of blame, failure, and disappointment because he says to God, the woman thou hast gavest me to be with me gave me the fruit. He is blaming. He is making an excuse. He's accepting failure. He is disappointed in what God, he had said just a few verses ago, was a blessing. Mm. And so oftentimes when we are not communicating in the spirit, but we are communicating in our flesh, back to the beginning, we communicate totally different. Come on, D. We communicate from a totally different space and place, and the intentions are very different. And so the Bible tries to tell us and teach us uh, and make it known to us that we must change the way we communicate as Christians. And so when we go back to the scripture and when we say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, or when, it, or, 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 um, when we accept Christ, we are a new creature, right? All things have passed away, all things become new. One of those things that we can't forget about Oh, we can't, it doesn't just mean, um, you know, it's not just meaning this deep spiritual thing. It's simple stuff. Our communication should, all old communication should pass away. The way we communicate, the way we communicate one another, the way we communicate with this world, all old things, once I put on this new man, there should be some new things about me as well. One mm. of those is communication. We have to communicate differently as believers of Christ. Amen. So James gives us probably the, the James chapter one probably gives us one of the best rules of engagement of how a believer should view communication. James chapter one, verse 19 says this. Wherefore, my beloved brother, let every man be swift to hear slow to speak, slow to rant. He says every man. He's not talking male or female. He's saying humanity. And he's really saying, because the Bible is written to those who are believers, he's saying, hey, wherefore my beloved, brother, those who are believers, those who are like-minded believers, those who say we are Christians, those who say we are believers and that our Lord and Savior is Jesus Christ, the brother. He says, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to write. And so he is setting up the blueprint of how the old man passes away because the old man is definitely not, uh, he definitely doesn't care anything about hearing. And he's not swift to do it. Hearing is the last thing of a, a, a fleshly person. So he says, we got to be swift to hear, slow to speak. So understand that when we're emotional, we talked about last week, people with their heart on their sleeves, they, don't, they aren't quick to hear anybody else's opinion or thought or idea. They want to speak. They want to get the first word in, last word in. They want to speak their peace. And so James said, oh, nope. If you're a believer, you got to be swift to hear, slow to speak. And now he says, slow to anger or slow to wrath. In other words, you better be slow about becoming emotional. In other words, he's saying, you better get control of your emotions if you're going to communicate in Christ. And so he tells us this. And he tells us this for a purpose and a point. Um, a lot of, if, if you've been around leadership for any, any period of time, a lot of people have experienced Stephen Covey and his seven high, uh, habits of highly effective people. 
one of the things he says, and I want to read it, it is a quote from Stephen Covey, not, uh, not myself or anyone else. It says this, you spent years learning how to read and write, years learning how to speak. But what about listening? What training or education have you had that enables you to listen so that you are really deeply understanding another human being from that individual's own frame of reference. And we spend a lot of time in our education, formally or informally, writing. And we spend a lot of time in our training, formally or informally, working on our ability to, to speak uh, and, and, and articulate words. We spend a lot of time on but here's why this is very interesting and very important in a time like today. We live in a world now, and we live in a culture now that everything is about being real, is about living and speaking your truth, about telling it like it is, and about calling it how we see it. Well, nowhere in any of that does it ever bring attention to listening to anyone else. So we live in a world, we live in a culture where everybody is trying to get their point across and everybody is trying to make sure you understand their truth and making sure that they are showing you who they are. And that's the, that's the world that we're in. And so we live in a world, we live in a culture where everybody's on a, on a fast track to live their truth. Well, if everybody is living their truth and everybody is speaking their truth, understand that the truth is never being spoken or heard. Because the reality of the situation is, our truth is really not a truth. What we are speaking is facts. Come on, Dee. Preach. So nobody is denying that what you're saying is not fact. The problem is, the Bible doesn't say anything about facts. It says, I am a God of truth. And so, unless you are speaking in alignment with the word of God, you are not speaking truth. What you are speaking is facts. But he says, I am a God of truth. And so, he tells us as believers, as mature believers in Christ, as those who should be allowing the Holy Spirit to rule and guide us, he says, you must come from a place of truth. And your truth is not as you see it or out how you concoct it, but your truth is in what the word of God says it is. That's your truth. So we're going to read some scriptures later on that talk about the importance of making sure that your speech and what you think is not more important than the truth that God has given us. And so we got to be very careful uh, that we don't do that. So um, when we start going on this, this road of making sure that we get our, our points across and making sure we, we're, we're living our truth and we're telling our story, we oftentimes get ourselves into a place where what we really are saying, if we really back it up and we're honest with one another, what we're really saying is, I don't care about what you have to say, because what I have to say is more important. And so that's the mindset, that's the attention, that's the focus in which we operate. And that's the way the world operates. Now, the Bible says that us as believers and those who are led by the Holy Spirit should not be operating in that same mindset. And in James, 
we just read, he says, the first thing we do as believers is we are swift to hear. It means that we are once again saying we're in no hurry to say something, but we are really interested in hearing what you have to say. And so I'm not opposed to anyone getting their facts out and anybody telling their story. I'm not opposed to that at all. Um, and matter of fact, James here says, hey, it, it, you know, believers, we should listen to people's story. We should listen to people's truth. Um, nothing wrong with that. But I do like one thing that Stephen Covey says. Um, um, and I, I'll go to the scriptures and then I'll go to, go to what Covey says. One thing I do like about Stephen Covey is I truly believe uh and I don't, I don't knock his, I don't knock his, his hustle. But if you, if you, if you've done any study in the seven habits of highly effective people, one thing you will notice is a lot of the stuff that he says uh, is strictly scripture. Um, and so he is, he is uh, speaking and teaching from a uh, strictly out of the scriptures. He's telling people how to lead, um, but he's just not using or quoting Bible scriptures. But it says this. If you go to Proverbs chapter 18, verse 2, this, this is what Proverbs says here. It says, a fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. So what in the world is that saying? A fool hath no delight in understanding. In other words, you're not, you don't listen. You're not trying to understand anything. You have no desire to do that. The Bible, not Damon, not Awesomeness of God Christian Church, the Bible says you're a fool if that's the way you are. If you aren't willing to hear, listen, get understanding, get some learning, says you're a fool. But he that is hard they discover itself. Does anybody have a, a, a different translation? I'm reading King James. Does somebody have a uh, NIV version or New Living the Translation? Amplified. I have the Amplified. What's your Amplified say? A self-confident fool has no delight in understanding, but only in revealing his personal opinions and himself. I don't know if that's the world you live in, but that's the world I oftentimes feel I live in. Where people have no desire to have any understanding and have any truth. But what they do want to do is express how they feel. And in Proverbs chapter 18, verse two, it says, that's a dangerous person because you're trying to, to make, one, we know the Bible tells us we must be careful of our feelings. And now we have a person that is communicating not off truth or understanding, but off of how they feel. That is a very dangerous, dangerous person to be leading the communication. And it says, if that's who you are, I like the, the scripture didn't say if that's who, it says if that's who you are, calls you a fool. Now, somewhere else in the scripture, I haven't, I haven't, I'll be honest, I haven't really looked. I wonder what it calls the person or if it identifies who the person is um, that one listens to that and two acts on it. There are a lot of people who uh, base their opinion, take their actions on the emotions of someone else and what someone else has said. But what they don't do is take their emotions and, or, or take their actions on what is the truth. And so that is a very dangerous place to operate from. The Bible says we should not be operating from that place. But the Bible says to us as believers, we, because we don't want to be fools, should not be operating in that way. So it tells us then 
hey, you, before you open your mouth, before you go speaking and espousing something, don't do it based on how you feel. Base it on the fact that you have understanding and facts to support. And it is the truth. And the truth is according to God and no other. So go to uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 through 4. Says this, let nothing be done through strife or main glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Did you say that was Ephesians? Uh, I'm sorry. Did I say Ephesians? I meant Philippians. If I said Ephesians, I'm sorry. Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 4. I'm sorry. I'll read that again. Uh, Philippians chapter two, verses three through four, it says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, once again, it says mind, not heart, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things. That's your own facts. That's your own story. That's your own truth. But every man also on the things of others. So this living your own truth, telling your own truth, this, this whole thing of um, being your, your, your true to yourself, understand there's nothing wrong with that. However, oftentimes and most times that is coming from a place of saying I'm first. And what you have to say is not important to me. And so the Bible says, if you are a believer, if you are led by the Holy Ghost, it says, no, you take a different approach. The approaches that you take is, you don't do nothing, you do nothing through self-strife, bland glory. It's not about your pride. It's not about you. It says, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem the other better than themselves. In other words, he's taking you back to John 15, and he is saying, no greater love than any man to lay down his life for a friend, which means you're going to put somebody else's needs, thoughts, and will before your own. He says, that's the way the Holy Ghost, if you're led by the Holy Ghost, that's the way you should communicate first. What is it that you're trying to say? And so this is what, this is a, this is a different mindset. This is a different thought, but understand that the thought and the mindset of Jesus Christ, which should be the same mindset as ours is, we are fighting against flesh. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. We are fi fighting against uh, spiritual powers. This is spiritual warfare. And so if you're fighting spiritual warfare. Spiritual D. Spiritual. Emotional time wasters. This, ain't about, this is not about our emotions. We're in spiritual battle. Amen. People are battling for their eternal lives here. And Amen. we are trying to get a message across to Amen. people who are fighting for their eternal lives. So he says we got to communicate differently. Mm -hmm. We don't just want to win the debate. It's not about winning the argument. That's why the Bible tells us not your job to sit around arguing the Bible with people. You're getting mm -hmm. into an emotional, uh, self prideful exchange to see who knows more, who has. That's not important. At the end of the day, what determines success and failure is, did you speak a word? Did you share something with someone that gives them an opportunity to become closer to Christ? That's, that's the conversation. That's, that's what's important. And so back to that theory of that concept of uh, you, uh, lose, uh, you, you won the battle, but you lost the war. 
it's not really about winning battles. You're trying to win a spiritual warfare, you're trying to win a war, not trying to win little battles alone. And so it takes a different mindset to want to win a war than if you're just trying to win a battle. A battle is a short-term focus. A war is a long-term outcome. Mm -hmm. And so why, why you might chop somebody up in the word and you might outword them and you might know more than them. At the end of the day, you won that battle. However, you may not have won the war. And so when it comes to communication, and if we're going to communicate, and we're going to share the word of God with others, we have to make sure we're communicating in a way that is different than the world. Amen. What you saying? And then, so, you know, Stephen Covey, uh, in his seven habits, habit number five is a, is a great one. He says, seek first to understand, then be understood. Come on. Man. In other words, don't be selfish in communication. I want to understand where you're coming from and I'm willing to let you go first. Then we'll get to, I'll now try to explain to you and get you to understand my view. It's a different approach. That's a different step. So he says, we have to be in a point where we are swift to hear. The other thing that James says is we have to be slow to speak. Now, I love David, and I like everybody knows me. I love Proverbs, but I do love David, and and David in Psalms says some interesting stuff. So let's go to Psalms one forty one about being slow to speak. Listen to what David says here. David has defeated Goliath. This is he is he is a man's man when it comes to that. When it comes to battle. When it comes to battle, David is a man. He beat the giant. He beheaded the giant. This is what David says here. David says this. Psalms 141, verse 3. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Come on, D. Come on now. You're preaching. Help us, Lord. Amen. So David who is a great warrior has made a determination that he could beat the lion. Mm -hmm. He can slay the giant, but what he can't, but what he, un one, he understands the fact, the power of the mouth. So he starts this prayer two verses, um, three verses in, and he says, set watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my, of my lips. In other words, God, watch how I can make sure I'm understanding, making sure, make sure that he says, set a watch on it. Make sure I am mindful of this mouth. Make sure I'm mindful of how I'm communicating. And then he says, keep a door on it. In other words, he's saying, one, let me be thoughtful and mindful of how important and powerful my words are and how I communicate is. But then secondly, he says, because he knows that's a that's a that's huge. But then he says, uh, help me close it. Mm. He said, put a door on my lips. Yes. Come on now. So I can be I can be swift to hear. If I keep my mouth closed, I can hear long. So he said, put a door. I want to open my, I want to say something. Close your mouth. Put a door on. Uh, go to go to Psalms nineteen uh, verse four. Psalms nineteen four. David here speaking again. He says, "Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. And them hath he set a tabernacle to the sun." So understand. David here is talking about the line going out through the earth and their words to the end of the world. And then he says, in them hath he set a tabernacle to the sun. He is talking about 
understand that he is not just talking about today. He's talking about tomorrow. He's talking about the power of words going out, and they're going to be around to the end of the world. What we say, what we communicate is not just for the minute, the hour, the day of the communication. But it has lifelong impact. And as a result of that, James says, be slow to speak. Because the words that you say have long-term effect. So what I say, I have to be mindful of what so I say and how I say it Just so because true. it has long-term impact. Now go back to, uh, flip back to the book of uh, uh, Proverbs really quickly. And in Proverbs uh, chapter 10, verse 19, we do find, now, you know, I always tell people that's my favorite book. Uh, but Proverbs, we find Solomon teaching here. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19, Solomon says this. Proverbs 10, 19. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. But he that refrain his lips is wise. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. Does anybody have a different translation there? Again, Proverbs I have. Chapter 10, verse 19. I have Again. that. In... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Uh, that was Proverbs 10, 19, correct? Yes. Mine says, this is the NIV. Sin is not ended by multiple words but the prudent holds their tongue. Amen. Say, don't do a lot of talking. Don't do a lot of speaking. Say, a prudent man is mindful of what he says, how he communicates. Proverbs 21. Now, uh, Pastor, you still have the message? Were you going to come from the message Bible there, or what were you going to read? Well, I had to, I have to amplify it. I can get it. From I'm the sorry to amplify. That's what I meant. What what's what's your amplified say there for the ten nineteen? In a multitude of words, transgression is not lacking, but he who refrains his lips is prudent. So understand, in another in another way to say it, and I like the way amplified says it there, is. Oftentimes, once again, because you have to understand what the what Sol what Solomon is saying here is we come from a place that is not good most times. So the more we say, the worse things are. And so if you know that oftentimes we are not coming from a godly, righteous place, the more words we say, there's a great possibility that we're going to error on the side of it's going to become sinful communication. It's going to become fleshly, ungodly communication the more we come. So best thing for us to do is say less. And I know that is a statement, a term that people, that the young folks use now, say less means that you don't have to say no more. And so sometimes we in the body of Christ need to adopt the say less philosophy. We don't need a lot of words. I want to tell you the, the, the I don't want to interrupt, Dick, but I want to tell you the New Living Translation is amazing. It says, "Too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut." I love it. Too much talking, and the reason it says too much talking I, is because not. of where <laughs> we come from. Oh Lord, we aren't as much as we like to think we are. Oftentimes, we are not walking around filled with the Holy Ghost all 24 hours of your day. So the more you talk, there's a good possibility that you might be outside of the will of God and outside of the Holy Spirit, and you're going to start speaking in flesh. So good thing for you to hold back the words you say. 
Otherwise, you're going to venture into sin. Which is, and, and David just told us that the words are powerful. And so, and they have lifelong altering impact and effect. So he says, don't do a lot of talking. Yep, quit Any while you... Amen. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I just said, quit while you are ahead. Amen. Correct. Uh, <laughs> Proverbs chapter 21, verse 23 says this. Um, he says, Amen. who so keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. Oh, come on, D. Come on now. So I know we live in a society in a world that said, well, let me go speak my mind. Let me go tell people what I think. Understand yeah. that's the total opposite of what the word of God says. Now, I tell people this all the time. One of the hardest things, but I'm telling you, it can save your marriage. Men, shut up. <laughs> oh, come on, D. Say it again. Come on now. <laughs> and here's why. And I, and I don't I don't say this in a sexist way. I say this in the most loving way possible. But oftentimes, usually when a man, if he is constantly talking, he is going to say something that is going to hurt people. And so oftentimes as a man, and that's what a, a mature man and that has a relationship with Christ knows is, you don't say the first thing that comes to your mouth. Close your mouth. Give it some time to think, go to God about it, do something, and then come back to the conversation. Come on now, Dave. Because oftentimes what you don't understand as a male figure, as the head of a household, as the lead, what you say can crush the spirit of your family. And so it's best that even and when you're upset, when you're frustrated, when you're in pain, close your mouth. Come back to it once you've had time to get some understanding. And so this is the way that God has designed it with great reason. And so one of the challenges we have with our current community that we, we live in, the culture we live in, is we have males walking around saying anything and everything that comes to them. That's dangerous. That's very wow, dangerous. man. Whew. And so we are speaking things into existence that are not good. And unfortunately, for some of us in some cultures, the communication is so vital and so bad, it is communicating and teaching and delivering death and destruction. And it's by simply by the way we communicate. Nothing more, nothing less. But it's unbelievably dangerous. And so the word of God tells us we have to get some control over our communication. It's vital that we get control over. Go to, uh, I'm going to go to Philippians in a second. So we got to make sure that you say, well, okay, now I know that how important the communication is. So uh, what should the people of God be communicating? So what should we be communicating? Well, good thing. God gives us that too. He tells us when we are believers, he tells us what our message and communication should be. Uh, go to uh, go to Philippians. Um, we'll start in Philippians, uh, and and um, I tell you what, I'll get Philippians. Can somebody get Romans 12, 14 and fifteen? Where I get Philippians, Romans twelve, fourteen and fifteen, and then I will also get 
Colossians. And then if somebody could get Isaiah chapter 6, verses 5 through 8. So if somebody gets Romans 12, 14 and 15, and somebody gets Isaiah 6, 5, and, uh, 5 through 8, I will get uh, Philippians and I'll get Colossians. Um, I'll get Isaiah. Okay, thank you. And, All right, uh, I, I have... Um, you got Romans 12? Yes, I forgot what verses you said. I'm in 12. Uh, Romans though, right 12, now. 14 and 15. Got it, okay. All right, so I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to read Philippians 4 and 8, and then Pastor will come to you at Romans. Philippians 4 verse 8 says this. Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good of a good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. So Paul speaking here says, here's what you need to be thinking about, church. Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, mm -hmm. whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think of these things. Amen. So guess what? When you what oftentimes what you think about, that's what you speak about. And so Paul was trying to tell the church, I don't care what's going on out here. I don't care what other, other people are talking about. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about things that are just, we're talking about things that are pure, we're talking about things that are true, we're talking about honesty, we're talking about love, we're talking about things of good report. We're not trying to tear this people down. This is what we're talking about over here. This is how we communicate. Uh, Pastor, can you get uh, what you got for Romans uh, 12, 14, and 15? Romans 12, 14 from the uh, New Living Translation says, bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Hmm. That was verses 14 and 15, right? Yep. Yep. And so Paul, once again, he's over in Rome, he's talking. He said, hey, those people that condemn you, hey, we, okay, hey, don't, you know, the people that persecute you, hey, you bless them anyway. Keep it moving. You don't like me, I don't believe, okay, no problem. It's, hey, it's all love. Why are we keeping it moving? And then when we find, we come across people that are happy, that are, uh, that are, that are joyful, that are blessed, we're going to be happy and joyful with them too. But we're going to keep it moving. Now go to, uh, I'm going to get Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, says this. Paul again speaking. He says, let your speech be also with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Amen. Now, he what he's telling us, if you don't get nothing else out of this scripture, He's saying you don't get in a conversation with people emotionally. Especially when you talk about the word of God. It's ain't about emotion. He said, let your speech be with grace. First and foremost, have compassion for people when you're talking to them. Let it come from a place of understanding that not everybody has the same maturity level and, and experience as you do with the Holy Ghost. Then he says, and then so when you're talking to them, season it with salt. So now it says season it with salt. That means you have to have word in you. Okay. You need to be purified by the word. So now when I talk to you, I'm not telling you what I think or how I feel or what my mama told me. I'm going to tell you what the word of God says. on Preach. Salt. And then he says, that they uh that ye may know how to answer every man. So he says, if you come, two things you need to do. If you if you're gonna speak on in my name, you're gonna go on speak on my behalf. First, I need you to have some grace, have an appreciation, have respect that not everyone 
has the same level of maturity, has had the same experience with the Holy Ghost that you have. So ha give them some grace. Then he says, uh, you need to season your word. Don't just say what you think or your, what's on your, don't speak emotionally. We don't want you telling nobody your truth. He says, you some words. Now. He said, we're going to speak the truth. We're going to put some salt on it. And you salt in the season is the word of God. That's yes. Right. And then he says, that's how you interact with not just people in the church, not just your family. It says, so you know how to answer every man. Communication is important. Uh, Isaiah chapter, uh, sis, if you got Isaiah chapter six, verse five through eight. Yes, I do. I'm reading Isaiah chapter six, verses five through eight from the NIV version. And it reads, oh, I thought I had it. I'm sorry. Five through eight. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined for I am a man of unclean lips and I live among people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen, and my yeah. eyes, that's okay. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coat in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt has been taken away and your sin has been atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, who shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. He said, go tell his people. Oh, I, I went too far, but amen. You're fine. So understand Isaiah, amen. Isaiah comes to the conclusion that his mouth is no different than the world. And so before he can go out and before he can talk to anybody about the word of God, he says, I must be purified. I got to change the way I talk. I have to change the way I communicate. And now when I'm willing to do that, now he says, hey, God, you can send me. Now, the beautiful thing I think about Isaiah is Isaiah identifies the fact earlier on in verse 5. Read verse 5 again, sis, really quick, if you can. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. Okay. Um, you said I, Isaiah just, 6, verse 5. Yep, just the, just verse 5. Yep. Woe to me, I cry, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. I love the fact that Isaiah identifies that his, his communication skills are no different than the world. But after an experience with God, or an experience with the Holy Ghost, he understands that he needs to change it before he can be used. And so oftentimes we got to come to the understanding of, hey, you know, we may want to be used by God and God may want to use us, but as a result of that, that means you got to change the way you communicate. And so Isaiah appreciated the fact that when he looked at the way he communicated and he looked at the way the world communicated, he says, I'm doomed because I'm no different. But I mm. had an experience with the Holy oh. Ghost and I know something should be different. And in order for me to be an effective member of the kingdom, I have to be changed. And so he says, as a result, he was purified at his mouth. That's what a cold, that's what a hot cold went. Had to fix his communication. Come on now. And then he says, once now that I've done that, now he says, Hey God, you can send me. I'm good. I'm good to go. I got I, I understand. Had to had to get it fixed first, but I'm I'm ready to run. And so we must be the same way. The communication is important. Isaiah is a powerful, powerful man of God, but understand he appreciated the fact that his communication must change if he was going to be effective for the use of the king. Um, so 
That's the message we should be communicating. Those are the things we should be communicating. The other thing we got to get control of, we got to have some clarity on is how uh, we communicate it or the tone more important. The tone and demeanor of our communication, very important. Two verses, and then we're going to get into the, the uh, uh, how should we be communicating. Our tone, our demeanor are important. First uh, Thessalonians chapter one, verse two says this. First uh, um, uh, Thessalonians chapter one, verse two, and it says, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. So first and foremost, when we come to people, when we have the, the opportunity to communicate, we got to make sure um, that our tone, our demeanor of our communication is in a way uh, in which we are grateful or thoughtful of the uh, opportunity to communicate with people. It's not a burden. It's not, um, you know, I think a lot of people are guilty of it. We almost don't want to communicate with people. We want to go in our house and shut the door. We don't want to talk to people. We don't want to be around people. But honestly, it is a opportunity to communicate a message and a powerful and great message it is. And so when you have an opportunity to speak to someone, use it as an opportunity to be grateful and thankful for the opportunity to be able to speak to them because you could be saving someone's life. And so I, we are grateful, we are thankful to have that opportunity. Those of us who are uh, believers of God. Now, Proverbs chapter 17, Solomon here is, talks about it, uh, verse 23 through 28, and it reads this way. Uh, and then once again, Proverbs 17, 23 through 28, it says, A merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a broken spirit drieth up the bones. A wicked man taketh a gift out of the bosom of uh, to pervert the ways of judgment. Wisdom is before him that hath understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. A foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to her that bear him. Also, to punish the just is not good, nor to strike princes for uh, equity. He that hath knowledge spareth his words. And a man of understanding is of excellent spirit. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. It's a lot going on there, but fundamentally in the book of Proverbs, it's talking about a way in which you interact with people. Um, and it talks about a merry heart doeth, doeth good like medicine. If you come across as a person who does not want to communicate with people, or it is a burden for you to communicate with people or to have a conversation with somebody, well, why would anyone want to listen to anything you have to say? You, you're viewing them as a burden. Then it also says in verse 27, he that hath knowledge, um, have knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an, as an excellent spirit. So if you have the Holy Ghost, why are you frustrated, angry, and contempt if you have the Holy Ghost? Because you have understanding. So if the, the Bible says here, he says, if you have understanding, he's, a, he's an excellent spirit. I don't, I don't count it up. Uh, I don't think it's painful to communicate or talk to, talk to the people. Um, but understand the reason I don't think it's painful for a community because I understand that the Holy Ghost gives me a good spirit. It's a good place to be because oftentimes you're coming across a people who have no understanding. And so they're coming across to you once again, speaking and talking from a place of emotion. And it's your opportunity, your job to give them some understanding. Whether it's received or not received at that moment, the point is you have to give them some understanding. You should be sharing with them the understanding you have. The other thing we have to make sure, after we figured out uh, 
what we should be uh, communicating. And we understand we got our we got our our tone and our demeanor in a certain way. Um, how should we be communicating? A couple of scriptures, and I'll, I'll read uh, I'll read Proverbs since we're here. Proverbs Solomon he speaks to that. You know how how should we be communicating? Um, he says this Proverbs chapter fifteen verses one through two: A soft answer turneth away wrath, but a grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge upright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Hey, you know what? One, you got to be careful that you don't come across as speaking down to people, as being harsh to people. Solomon said that don't work. He said, but I tell you what that will do is you will get to a point where you're going to get people angry and upset. Yeah. And so now you're dealing with somebody who you've offended, and now you're dealing with an emotion of anger, probably not a good place to be, especially if you're trying to share a message of life. Then he also says, the tongue of the wise useth knowledge upright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. So understand, once again, you're coming from a different place, Make sure you're using it in the right way. Don't be speaking a bunch of foolishness. Give them knowledge. Give them the understanding. And don't come with a bunch of, this is how I think or what I think or how I feel. That's not important. That's zero value. It's not important when you're talking about having a conversation about the word of God. If you're talking about a, a movie or you're talking about drama or you're talking about a play, you can give your emotional opinion all, all you want to. But when we're communicating and talking about this word of God, we got to give the truth and nothing but the truth, period. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 11 through 12. He says this, a word, filthy speaking, uh, filthily speaking is, uh, I'm sorry, fitly speaking, is like apples of gold in a pitcher of silver. As an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. So once again, what are we saying? Do we have a word fitly spoken? And, and if uh, I don't know what some somebody might have, uh, it might say spoken at the right time. You get an opportunity sometimes to share a word with somebody, a word of God. A person that can share the word of God when it's needed and it's the right word, life-changing effects on people. But you got to be prepared for Amen. Uh, opportunity and the moment. The, the other scripture uh, that, that's pretty important about how we should be doing what we do is found in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to read Ephesians four, and then we're going to get ourselves closing into some stuff we got to avoid when we're communicating. Um, otherwise, we, we, we're doing more harm than good. It says this, but speak the truth in love. May grow up into Him in all things, which is the head, uh, which is the head, even Christ. So understand in the book of Ephesians, Paul is talking about uh, us having a new life in Christ. So one of the things he says is, but speak the truth. He didn't say speak your facts. He said, speak the truth in love. Come on now, preach. Amen. So give them the word of God. Give them the truth. But you're doing in love. I'm not trying to attack you. I'm not trying to harm you. He said, give them the truth. Give it to them in love may grow up into uh, him all things, which oh, is the head, even Christ. That's what, that's, that's what you, that's how you have to communicate. You got to do it in love, but I got to give them truth. I, just because I love you, I can't give you a lot. I, because I love you, I can't tell you something that's based on my emotion, but I got to give you the truth because that's what the word of God requires. 
That's why I do it. So I know we live in a world now that anytime you don't align yourself with the way people feel, it's that you are um, condemning them, you're, 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 you're speaking down to them, you're denying their truth. You hate them, amen, all kinds of stuff. I don't I'm, not, I'm not saying none of that. What I'm saying is, I'm going to tell you the truth. Yes. And understand that the truth may, may make you feel good, it may make you mm -hmm. feel bad, but it's not my job to try to navigate and manage people's feelings though, when it comes to the word of God. It's the truth. When it comes to the word of God. Yes, now, sir. understand if my child is crying and they're hurt, I'm going to try to manage their emotions. But if my child is crying and hurt and they want to do something that is ungodly, I am not because they're, that's going to make them feel better. I'm not going to go against the word of God. Amen. So we got to be very mindful that, that, that we have to be very clear and crisp as to how we deal with this. I won't go into, uh, for the sake of time, I won't go into all the scriptures, but I do want to talk a little bit briefly about how we, uh, we should not, or how we have to avoid communicating with people. We got to be very careful because just as good as we can, we can be, uh, we can be tools. We can also be uh, weapons, and so we got to be very, very, uh, very clear that we don't, we don't step outside and get ourselves in a bad way. Go to Second Peter, uh, chapter two, and let's talk about some some conversations, some communication we got to avoid. We can't be a part of this. Second um, uh, Peter chapter two, uh, verse. We're going to do 11 and uh, we're going to do 11. I mean, I, I will do, we'll do 12 and we'll see. We might just read 12, but we might go down more further. Uh, it says this, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 12. But these, as natural brute beasts, uh, made it, uh, made it be, may be taken uh, and destroyed. Speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. All shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it a pleasure to riot in daytime. Spots they are of uh, blemishes, spotting themselves and their own deceiving while they feast with you. Having eyes full of adultery and uh, that they cannot cease from sin, beguiling, uh, un, un, uh, unstable, uh, unstable souls, a heart they have exercised with covetousness practices, cursed children. Understand what we can't get into. And fundamentally, what we're talking about here is you cannot speak and teach this word of God based on your emotions. Because I'm here to tell you, God will hurt your feelings. He does not care how you feel. He does not care what you like. And so he says, we have to be very mindful that when we go out into this world, there is a natural brute beast. There is a Satan, there is a demonic spirit in this world made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of things that they understand not. So understand you walking out into a world they don't understand the Holy Ghost. They don't know, don't understand the, the word of God. That's what you're walking into. But he says, you better make sure you don't, because of your emotions, get yourself aligned with their way of thinking. And just because they're rioting, now you're rioting. Just because they're upset, now you're upset. But what you better be doing is standing and making sure that whatever side you're siding on, that it aligns with the word of God. So he says, you got to be careful. He understands, once again, God understands that we're emotional people. Understand he gave, he made us in his likeness. He's emotional. So he understands it, but he doesn't give us an out. He says, we have to be mindful. Don't get caught in our emotions. Uh, Ephesians chapter four, verse 29 says this, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of the edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So here's what I'm saying. This thing of cussing people out, 
and arguing and fighting people, and you call yourself Holy Ghost filled, saved, and sanctified, you are a terrible demonstration to the body of Christ. Understand that is a terrible demonstration. Paul tells the church of, of Ephesus here, he says, let no corrupt, and he did not say words, he said communication. So he said he don't care whether you speak it, whether you write it down, whether you put it in an emoji, whether you put it in a gift, he doesn't care how you communicate it. He says, no corrupt communication proceed out of the mouth. But that which is good to use for the edifying. So he said, hey, what well, you need to be speaking, if it ain't edifying the holy, if it ain't edifying the, the, the God, if it ain't, if it ain't edifying, and if it ain't ministering grace to the hearers, stay away from it. Stay out of the gossip. Stay out of the foolishness. And so here's why we got to be very careful. We live in a world where we're constantly listening to media. We're constantly watching TV shows that is about a bunch of foolishness and emotion. And it's about a bunch of harmful, the, the just totally demonic stuff. Come and on, Dave. Listening to that, if you're constantly watching that, understand that when you're put into a situation, that is what's going to come out of you. And so he says, we can't be a part of that. He says that is very dangerous. Ephesians 4, chapter 25 says this, wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. You say, hey, you got to be, can I stay away from the lying? You can't, you can't, if we, when we communicate, you can't be speaking lies. And let's be very clear. That also means a lie, whether it be something that's untrue in the world, but we better be very clear that we don't start speaking uh, truths when it comes, uh, speaking lies when it comes to this word. So if the word don't say it, I wouldn't try to infer something that the word does not say. Or I wouldn't try to make something right that the word says is. Come on now. Go to uh, Proverbs and then we're going to go to Ecclesiastes and uh, Amen. Proverbs, and we're done. Proverbs chapter uh, Proverbs chapter 26. I'm going to read verses 20 through 22. He says, you can't get into this communication. Solomon's talking to us. Say we got to stay away from communication that looks like this. Where no wood is, there, uh, there, I'm sorry, where no wood is, there the fire goes out. So where there is uh, no, no uh, tail bearer, the strife uh, uh, ceases. As coals are to, burning, uh, are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is the consciousness man that kindles strife. I mean, the contentious man uh, that, that, that uh, kindles strife. The word of the talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the uttermost parts of the belly. So other words, what is he saying? Hey, you better be very careful to make sure that you keep yourself away from gossiping. If you are, you cannot... If you're a gossiper, understand everything you stand on becomes questioned at this point. Because of it now starts to question your character. Solomon say, hey man, you got to say, we, we, we don't get caught up into that. I know the world like gossiping. Hey, you know what? When they start gossiping, you need to get into something else. Leave. Do something else. Come on now. Teach. Teach us deep. Amen. Then uh, Ecclesiastes 7, 21, 22 says this. Also, take no heed unto all words that are spoken, lest thou hear thy servant curse thee. For oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise hast cursed others. So once again, says really simply, and this is once again the Solomon talking again. As he's teaching here, he says, also take no heed unto the words that are spoken, lest thou hear if thy servant curse thee. 
oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thyself likewise have cursed others. So he's talking to us in, in, in two forms here. Pastor, can you grab that in your, in your uh, I'm going to get the, the closing scripture, but can you grab Ecclesiastes 7, 21 and 22 in your Amplified? I'm sorry, trying to get off mute. Yeah, Ecclesiastes 21, 22. What was the... Um, Seven. Seven, 21, 22? Yes. Okay. And you want it from the Amplified? Yeah, let me, hear, let me see what your Amplified says. Then. Okay. So... It says, oh, that's the wrong version. Let me get amplified. Or it can be another version. I just want something other than King James. I just, the King James. Okay, so New Living Translation is what I was on. Okay. And 21 reads, don't eavesdrop on others. You may hear your servant curse you. Verse 22, for you know how often you yourself have cursed others. Yeah, so... A lot of times we like to get ourselves in conversations and we like to, once again, we're into this gossip thing and the hearing the thing, talk about people say, be careful, but she might hear some bad stuff about you. And also, but then be reminded that you probably going to say some bad stuff about other people. Right. And so what you, as the old folks would say, any dog that uh, any dog that'll bring a bone or do what it'll take one. And so usually what happens is when people start gossiping, you feel like you got to gossip too. Mm -hmm. So he says, "You stay out of that. Stay out of that communication. Stay out of that. Avoid that kind of communication, because what's going to end up happening is you're going to get sucked into gossiping, even if that's not really something that you want to be a part of." We say, "Don't don't get yourself caught up into it." Don't be involved in those conversations. Closing scripture is this, Proverbs That's good. chapter 4, verse 23 through 27, says this, keep your heart or keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight forward before thee. Mm. Ponder the path of thy feet, and mm. let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Amen. Remove thy foot from evil. Amen. Amen. He starts Amen. by saying, with all diligence, keep thy heart because out of it flows the issues of life. And so oftentimes when we start talking about, as we talked last week, when people start saying, I got to lay down, you're going to make me lose my religion. You're going to make me lay down my religion. Use whatever term you want to. Understand if that's where your heart is, that's what you're going to resort to. So he says, he says, keep your heart with all diligence. That's why the scriptures say, give the devil, give the enemy no place. Protect your heart Amen. because out of it flows the issues of life. If you're constantly listening to music, watching TV that constantly is driving home, strife, and, 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 and hatefulness and, and not any way aligning itself with the word of God or what God-like activity is, understand that is penetrating your heart. So he says, guard it. Then he says, the next thing he says after guard your heart, he says the next most important thing is put away a forward mouth. Or in other words, put away a deceitful mouth. Amen. Come on now. And perverse lips put far away from me. Mm. He says, we got to be careful how we communicate. 
Yes. Yes. A we lion eating. Our, our, we got to control mm -hmm. our emotions, and we got to control our mouth. We got to control the way we communicate. Jesus, help us, Lord. And He says, "Here's how you're gonna do it. Let thine eyes look right on." And let thy eyelids look straight. He's talking about focus on God. Come on now. All this other food hey. gonna get you in trouble. So instead of focusing all your time and attention on what's going on on reality TV and on social media and what's in and what's out, he says you better put some your, your eyes on God. Then he says, make sure that you ponder the path of your feet and make sure they're established. You better make sure you know where you're going and you better stay out of stuff you shouldn't be in and turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove, and he says, remove thy foot from evil. It's just that simple. And if we don't do that, understand that our communication it's going to be effective. And I know I'm guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. We like certain music. We like certain TV shows. We got to understand. I'm not saying we're not going to like it. I'm not saying you, every, every song you listen to is going to be secular. I'm, I'm not saying that all of them are going to be gospel. But here's what you better understand. You better understand that the impact and power that these things have Yes. Over your ability to communicate and control your emotions. Yes. And if you don't appreciate, understand that, understand you will maybe surprise yourself or you're going to disappoint yourself because that real you is going to show up. Mm. And understand it could have damning impact on your testimony. And not only your testimony, but the path of others based on how you communicated with them. And so with that, I will bid you adieu. I do appreciate your time and attention Amen. this morning. And the only thing I can tell you is, please, please pay some attention to how you are communicating with people. Because for some of us, and in some situations, it could truly mean life or death. If you don't communicate the right way, and if you don't communicate and manage your way out of certain situations, it could truly mean the difference of someone being harmed or hurt or in prison or worse, dead as a result. Wow, my God. Mm. So with that, I say, God bless you. Have a good day. And look forward to seeing you next week. This um, time that we set aside is is for those that uh, want to uh, establish their relationship with Christ. Uh, come to Christ and accept him into your heart. But this message and this opportunity uh, is for those that hear this message and don't have a relationship with Christ. It is very important that you fill out form, uh, provide your information, someone in the church, whether it's the pastor, the condemn or myself, will get back in contact with you, and we will begin to share the gospel with you. Uh, Jesus said that I am the light of the world. Whosoever follow me will never walk in darkness, but will have light of life. If you want that light of light, Provide your information Amen. and we will get in contact with you and we will begin to share the gospel with you and you can begin to establish that relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. Feel his love, feel his promises, receive his grace and his mercy and know that God has a place for you in his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings that there will not be room enough to store it. Ways to give as you see on your screen. 
um, is uh, we have our website at www.asgcc.church. We also have our cash app, which is um, dollar sign ASGCC, and you'll see the church emblem there. Um, you have to download the app if you don't have it. We also have Tively app where you can go on and lo uh, locate our church's awesomeness of God Christian Church, or you can send a uh, check or money order to P.O. Box 1592, Riverview, Florida, 33578. Amen. Thank you. As far as our announcements, um, we would love to have everyone at our Wednesday night Bible study at seven o'clock. Bring a friend um, and come prepared mm -hmm. to digest and, and break down the Bible in a way that is fun and that we can understand it so that we may be able to carry that word with us and use it in our in our lives in a way as I mentioned, we can understand it. So again, Wednesday night Bible studies at 7 p.m. and our regular church services start on Sundays at 10 a.m. 